Playing Lions, so today we're going to be talking about character sets and how best to set them up to save you time when playing Bleach Brazos. So character sets, in my opinion, are kind of an underused part of the game, but maybe I just haven't seen a lot of talk about it. It's been in the game for like five or so months now. It's not a new feature, but it's something I definitely encourage you guys to set up, and I'm going to teach you how to best do it. At the same time, if you want to also make it look cool, I'll also tell you guys how to add some color text just to make it look a tad bit impressive. But once you do eventually set up your character set and also links, what I see is saves you so much time. It really does. I will say, though, it takes a quite a bit of extra time to, to set these up, especially in every part. Part of the game each part of the game each game mode has its own set of links accessories that you can set up but once you go ahead and do it the amount of time you save setting up far exceeds the amount of time you're about to spend on building your character every single time but for those that are wondering how to do color text all you have to really know is the hex codes in this case i'll leave a notepad in the description below of all the codes that i used and also my setups in terms of links accessories and all you have to do is really just copy paste it in this case by putting b in brackets it makes the text bold and then putting this particular hex code it means that when i enter it it becomes bold letters and it also is orange letters you can change and put any color you want to and all you gotta do is really just search hex code color and then you can easily find the code that you actually want in my case though across every attribute i made it so easy each attribute has its corresponding color and it just makes it look a tad bit nicer. So first up, when it comes to accessories, right? This is the quite simple one. We only have access to five sets where we can save and lucky for us, we have access to five different affiliations. So to make it easier for myself, I made it so I included a fortification pill, the 50% SP item, so T sets, T cups, Kamaris, K fastness, for example, for their corresponding affiliation, I would put that also in there and then I would give them the 20% strong attack damage accessory. Not every time are you using this accessory, but it's just a general accessory that you can use on any character. You know, sometimes you might use a Zeta pill or a sticker, for example. But in general, build that I just go with, I always use these three accessories for any given affiliation. So I made sure to set that up. And that's basically for every game mode, right? Unfortunately, we don't have access to any more slots. We can only save five at any given time per attribute. So what this does mean is that you can't save a set for NAD characters. But for me personally, and you might be different, I rarely, if ever, use NAD normal attack damage characters. So that's why across most of my builds, I didn't bother creating a set for them because I'm just rarely ever using them. The only time I use NAD characters are in guild quests, maybe in epic raids, but we'll talk about epic raids when we get to it. But at the same time, I maybe very rarely use humans. The human that I use the most is probably Uryu and he himself is a Quincy. So if you don't ever see yourself using human characters, you can easily replace this fifth slot with a Chappie build, Golden Chappie, Chappie Hollow Bait, for example, and that'd be perfectly fine. It's your set at the end of the day. It's to save you time. So feel free to set up how you you want, but my recommendation is to cover free accessories that you're going to use on any given affiliation. Now, if you are someone that doesn't have access to a T set, T cup, Kamari, Cape Fastener, for example, well, in that case, just replace it with a hunting cap. That's what I originally had until I put all the accessories, and that, for the most part, does get the job done. Now, when it comes to accessories, it can be a tad bit creative. It can be a tad bit different. This is what I've gone with, and right now, we're currently on just general PvE point event stuff, and in my case, for my very first build, I went with high SP that included, most importantly, strong attack recharge but also added damage alongside that i made sure to sort by sp so it was giving me the most amount of sp and also of course the most amount of damage so in this case for my best build across all attributes we have technique power speed and also of course mind we go with recharge full stamina strong attack damage and give me the most amount of sp possible this is 99 percent of the time the build that i'm using on any given character so it's my very first slot my second slot is the 14 recharge builds again we have done every single attribute if you can do it i recommend it sometimes maybe when i'm farming the point event especially with someone like yacha unahana i'm one shotting anyway my damage really doesn't matter that much so i more so prefer the extra recharge so that's why i set up a 14 percent recharge and then the third fourth and fifth one again it's just there to cover some extra ground in case i ever do need to go with it my third slot is just strong attack damage and also full stamina damage just to give me my highest damage potential in case i don't care about recharge my fourth build is just a normal normal attack damage build with the most amount of attack and then my final one is just for farming this could include crystal links, droplet increase links, and maybe even links or potion increase links. The fifth one is definitely a flexible one. For me, I just chose to do a farming one. But that was for general PvE content. Now let's have a look at one of the more important 
put in place to set this up in second one because especially if you're doing each individual stage if we ever do get a new tower you're gonna have to do 50 individual floors with 50 different characters and it takes a lot of time when you're manually setting up your character each individual stage so of course accessories are the exact same there's nothing really need to change here sometimes you might have to keep your set updated as you can see here my human i gave a hunting cap because i didn't have a daddy's great whistle now i do i should probably go ahead and update that when it comes to my links in senkamon i only chose to go with free so the fourth and fifth can be flexible slots i have nothing there don't need it when i'm playing senkamon i'm basically only ever using these three builds sometimes i might have to go over low stand builds but that is definitely few far in between so number one again the standard recharge highest sp that i can potentially get with extra soul traits that are giving more damage at full stamina or just strong attack damage my second one very similar to my pve setup full stamina strong attack damage if i possibly can heart doesn't have access to that many links but power for example we have a mixture of full stamina and also strong attack damage and in the third slot in case i do need or am forced to use a no attack damage character it's always good to have a nad build set up too with this it basically means that whenever i'm playing doing a new tower in any given month i can quite literally set up my character in the course of like one sentence 20 seconds even if there's one place to set up your character set you definitely want to do it in senkamon another important place to set up your character set is also limit breaker it's something that you want to do every single month and every time a new limit breaker quest does come out it resets the characters you have used so you are going to build your character each individual time so setting up sets here also save you quite a bit of time even if it's only for one time a month for accessories again it's the exact same every single time this covers basically every single game modes for links though it's a tad bit different and it definitely depends on how odd your account is in my case instead of making multiple different builds like strong attack damage and full stamina which to be fair, I have gone ahead and done just to have it there. Limit Breaker is a free character game mode, and there are characters out there that can kind of encourage you to use the same attribute, especially those that have the built in recharge in between stages. And more often than not, I'm using two characters, maybe even three characters in the same attribute. So, what I've done here is set up three sets with recharge and also damage this almost requires you to have nine resurrected links and you might not be able to do it but just having recharge links set up also does save you time it don't have to be the best possible links but i've done this in every attribute because you'll never know when you might have to use two or three characters in the same attribute so for limit breaker that's what i would kind of encourage again just nine recharge links do the job if you can get the extra damage from strong attack damage full stamina more strong attack damage or full stamina that's definitely something i recommend setting up too for the fourth and fifth slot again just to cover some extra ground strong attack damage and full stamina very rarely use that but if i ever need to it's set up and also normal attack damage again i rarely ever use nad characters in limit breaker but there have been times many the first time it came out where i did use a normal attack damage character and if i wanted to again all i gotta do is click on this set and boom the character set up now when it comes to carbon epic rays there are two type of sets you have your accessory set your character link sets but you also have sets of characters and also builds for Corp, again, accessories are the exact same. Links are very similar. In this case, I have one high SP build, recharge, strong attack damage. I also have an attack build in case I want to go, with, you know, for normal attack damage. And then I have three different ones. So my third one is when I'm feeling lazy. Let's say I'm getting carried. Maybe I'm playing inheritance zone. And I just want to auto. So I'll give my character maybe some built-in recharge with the healing effects. And also recharge and last dish survival if those links do exist in any given attribute. This is more so my auto build when I'm feeling a tad bit lazy. Or maybe again, I'm getting carried and then my fourth and fifth one is once more the lazy auto build but in this case i'm also going to be increasing the drop rate for either droplets or links or potions this i basically do in every attribute again i have access to links so this is basically what i do and i basically done that for every single attribute don't always use these but you never know when again you might actually need it as I mentioned though, when it comes to Cop and also Epic Rage, you also have sets saved up. And what I like to do is set it up for each individual game modes. So if we look at the power attribute, for example, fortunately I have access to characters that increase the drop rate for links or potions and also droplets. And depending on the game mode that I'm playing, these are the characters that I'm using. So for inheritance trials, at least when it comes to farming technique links or potions, I just auto it with Eighth Anniversary Ichigo. So I have him set up on an auto build, recharge, strong attack damage, last stage, built in healing. And that does the job. If I ever want to play IT, I quickly select that builds. For IZ, of course, I'm using my plus 10 links or farmer. I do this for basically every attribute if I have access to a plus 10 links or farmer. Again, haven't fully updated it, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Make sure to update it whenever you need to. With this, though, for Inheritance Zone, I'm using my best links or farmer with the links or potion link if I have access to it. 
And again, since IZ is quite easy, I like to auto it. I give myself the built-in recharge and also last ditch. For dropper zone, I'm going to use my plus 10 dropper farmer or any dropper farmer that I decide to use. If I possibly can, I would want to give them the dropper increase links too. And then my fourth and fifth builds is more to just a general build. Let's say I wanted to use Parasol Rukia. I don't have her, but let's say I did have her and I wanted to use her. Well, I'll quickly select my SP build. Characters basically ready. All I got to do is change the character. Same goes for your Nat characters. This is a good way to have a good and Chappy Chappy Hollow Bait sets up. If for some reason I want to use a normal attack damage character, I would select Momo, load the set, click on change, go to power, and then select my normal attack damage character that I actually want to use. Again, this takes less than 10 seconds. You do this for all five attributes. Again, it does take a while to set up, but again, it does cover every single game mode. When it comes to epic grades, it's very similar. I have my high SP with recharge, my high strong attack damage with full stamina. I have my NAD builds. And then I like to do high SP, high attack with potential increase in drop rate, whether that's a Link's or Potion Soul Trait or a droplet increase. Sometimes I'm doing extra farming. I know my character's doing enough damage. Well, in this case, I might want to use this build, for example. I like to cover a build for both SP characters and also NAD characters, depending on the character I'm using. Because while I don't use NAD characters that often in Epic Raids, I do see myself using NAD characters more often in this game mode when compared to the other parts of the game. And then remember, you also have access to character sets here. So what I like to do is, again, when I'm farming Epic Raids, I'm normally farming with my Link Store characters, and that's the main reason I'm playing this mode. So my first build is going to be my general build. I'm going to be using Rangiku. I gave her as much SP as I possibly can. I have my free Toshiro pet saved. They are giving me full stamina, strong attack damage, for example. And I made sure to get the Sun Slumming because when I'm farming Links or Potions, I'm always using a Links or character with a Sun Slumming. In the case I want to do that with potential increase in drop rate for droplets, then I'll use this build where I'm getting plus 5 Links or Potions plus 30% droplets. The third slot is going to be your flexible slot. You can do whatever you want here. And then my fourth and fifth slot, just an SP build, a random character I like just to use. And then also a no attack damage build. Uh, very important, again, to set up a Nat character build, especially in Epic Raids. As already mentioned, you might be using a Nat character. You might be using a bonus. If I ever wanted to use a heart character with a golden chappy, well, boom, Yuha's already set up. Let's say I don't want to use Yuha. I want to use another Nat character. Well, then again, the character builds already set up and I can quickly switch to Kisuke. Boom, the character's ready to go. And that's basically character sets and also links in a nutshell. The video might have went on longer than needed to be, but it's something I definitely recommend you guys do to save you so much time. The amount of time I saved over the last couple of months since I have set this up is uh, untimable, almost, right? You don't have to do it in every single game mode, but if you play the game a lot and you're playing with different characters' builds, it's definitely encouraged to set it up, especially in Senkamon. If you're only going to set up in one place, do it in Senkamon because, you know, the amount of times you're changing your character, you're trying out different builds, it adds on so much extra time, and if you it's only saved your character set. If you go through the mouth to set it up, the rest of the marathon is going to be significantly easier. Again, I will leave a notepad in the description if you want to get access to what my builds were. Just some example builds you can see on your screen. This is what it kind of looks like. If you want to copy and paste it, you can do that yourself. And again, it does also include the hex code if you want to do the colored text. Either way, though, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.